And good morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Cheryl Miller. For four years, there's been an ongoing sesquicentennial commemoration of the Civil War. As we know, Richmond played a pivotal role in the war between the states as capital of the Confederacy. April 1865 marked the fall of the Confederate capital, the end of the war, and the beginning of dramatic change for our city and the country, including a reunification of America. A number of programs are coming up this week to mark the end of this dramatic journey in American history. Esteemed historian and University of Richmond president and chairman of the board of the American Civil War Center at Tredegar. Ed Ayers joins us this morning. Good morning, Dr. Ayers. Good morning. How are you today? I, I'm fine. Thank you. You have been very busy putting this whole thing together. Uh, it's called Richmond's Journey, and, and there is a, a full week, I guess, including into the weekend of commemorations. How did this whole thing come about? Well, we've been working on it for a long time, as you say, and here in Richmond, the whole point was to recognize that we're commemorating two big events. One is the Civil War, but the other is the end of slavery. And for a long time during the war, slavery is not ending, and so we've not really been able to celebrate anything. We've commemorated. But coming up this weekend, it would be the closest thing that you would see to the end of slavery. Abraham Lincoln comes to the city after uh, the Confederates evacuate it, uh, surrounded by the freed people, and it's the closest thing that we can see that looks concretely like the end of that. So these are events of world importance that happen right beneath our feet here, and we've been working for years to try to be worthy of this moment. And the end of the Civil War means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, and that's what this commemoration is all about. It's going to come at this from a lot of different angles. Yeah, the whole you know, and, um, collaboration that we've been built is built on the idea that there's not just one history. There's all these different strands, and they all have to be honored if you're going to do it right. And so on the commemoration, you'll start all the way. We'll be following the story as it unfolded in real time. Mm -hmm. And so we'll begin with Jefferson Davis getting the word that Richmond is getting ready to be abandoned and that he had better leave. And that'll be in St. Paul's Church where he heard that word. And then events really start spiraling out of control. And that night, we will be recreating downtown with a series of tours what it looked like when Richmond burned. Uh, because as the Confederates fled, they accidentally set fires that burned the, the business district. But it's my experience, people don't really have much of an image of what that looked like. Mm -hmm. And so you'll be able to walk through the streets where it happened and they'll be projected on the walls of the buildings, images of the flames, but also of the photographs of the time. And there and throughout all of this, there will be people who will be telling you what it was like to be there in those moments. So dressed interpreters who will be walking through the streets. And who really know what they're talking about and who can say, I'm standing here on the cusp of freedom. I've been a young enslaved woman all this time. What's this going to mean? Or I'm a Confederate soldier who's been left behind at the hospital when the government left. Or I'm a United States Colored Troop soldier who's marching into the city and helping to extinguish the flames and helping to bring freedom. Um, and or I'm a woman who's been working in the hospital for the last four years, these horrible scenes, or I'm somebody who came here for freedom, uh, and now what's going to happen? So people need to be ready when they walk around the streets of Richmond on Thursday and Friday and Saturday. They're going to be talking to people who can tell them what it was like to be here. And be free to approach them and ask them questions. Uh, they might approach you, so you better <laughs> be ready. Um, and then on Friday, um, down in the Shaco Bottom area, there, there will be uh, a, a multifaceted uh, commemoration of the end of slavery in which people will be remembering the things that happened there, but also the past that people followed from Africa to Richmond. Uh, and with music and, and thinking about all the things that had unfolded on that piece of real estate. And so you would go from Thursday to the burning to Friday, the commemoration of the end of slavery. And then Saturday, we have something that nobody that I've ever talked to can remember, which is we have the state capitol and the entire capitol square to use for this commemoration. Wow. Uh, Governor McAuliffe will be addressing us from, this, from the South Portico. There'll be a choir from Virginia Union University that will be singing and celebration. And the United States Colored Troops will be following the same path that they followed into Richmond to the Capitol Square that morning. There'll be a long procession. People are welcome to join, come uh, celebrate that moment. Uh, and so you'll be standing there in Capitol Square, the very place where these things happened, 
uh, exactly 150 years ago uh, and reflecting on all those things. Sometimes living in the city, we forget how pivotal Richmond really was in the transition of our country at that time. Well, you know, the whole world was watching this moment and there was only one place Abraham Lincoln came to see what the war had wrought and what the end of slavery might look like. And you'll be able to follow the same path that he followed on tours. Matter of fact, there'll be tours all over the place following any aspect of this that you're interested in. And the National Park Service is being remarkable allies and all the folks at the American Civil War Museum um, and basically and the Legba Folklore Society, the Slave Trail, all these folks are working together and saying, we share this history, now let's share it with you. And it really is recent history. 150 years ago is not that long ago. Just a few generations. I mean, we're just now be beyond the point where people could have an ancestor who remembered it. Now, this is a way for us to see it with fresh eyes. And when you come to Capitol Square on Saturday, there's be all kinds of exhibits and people really want to bring their families. There's going to be so many things for families to do, uh, young people telling stories. Uh, there's going to be archeology. span You'll be following the nine questions you might have. You know, who set the fire? You know, things that people <laughs> talk about in Richmond mm, yeah. don't really know. Uh, and uh, so it's going to be something, as they say, for all ages and for all kinds of interests. So we've worked really hard this collaboration. It's over 20 groups are coming together to make this as good as we possibly can. And so people can come in and follow their own particular interests or passions, some of which they may not know they have till they get there and they see what it's going to look like. You know, it's going to be important people understand that we're going to have plenty of parking, there'll be plenty of volunteers helping you know where to go, there'll be food trucks down on Bank Street so that you can take a break and, and enjoy some of that great food at the same time you're being a part of something that people will never see again in Richmond of this scale and wouldn't want to miss it. And people really want to be a part of it. Dr. Ed Ayers, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Cheryl. You're very welcome. And as we mentioned, there's a series of events this week to commemorate the 150th anniversary of the 1865 Fall of Richmond, including Christian perspectives on faith, then and now exploring the meaning and the end of slavery and the Civil War in Richmond through the lens of the faith community. That will start things off tomorrow, April 1st, from 7 to 8.30 at Second Presbyterian Church on Fifth Street. You can go to our website, wtbr.com slash vtm, for a link to a full schedule schedule of events for this very important commemoration of the city, something you do not want to miss. Thank you, Dr. Ayers.